Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, welcome back to my video game review series. So those of you who have been following my channel will know that recently I've been reviewing several fighting games in the X-Men series. In my last video I reviewed X-Men Mutant Academy from the year 2000. Prior to that I reviewed Children of the Atom, which is basically a game that started the trend. Today we're going to be looking at the sequel, and if truth be told, my personal favourite X-Men fighting game, for several reasons. X-Men Mutant Academy 2, released in 2001, so just one year after the first game, once again developed by Midway Studios. So right off the bat, I love this game, and it's a game that induces a lot of nostalgia in me. Those of you who saw my top 100 favourite video games of all time, the list that I made last year, might be wondering why I never included this, given the fact that I love the game so much. The truth is, I kind of just forgot how much I loved this game, since it had been quite a while since I last played it, and I had pretty much forgotten how good the game was, and how well it still holds up today. In retrospect, I definitely would have added it to the list otherwise, but I digress. This was actually the first X-Men video game I ever played, and as a fan of the 90s animated series, you can see exactly why this game would appeal to me. Just like the first game, the game is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, based mostly on the style of the 90s X-Men animated series, one of the things you'll notice right away if you play this game after playing the first, is that the game is visually indistinguishable from the first. The graphics and presentation are practically the same, and there are definitely a lot of assets reused, such as character models and battle arenas. However, there have also been a lot of new ones added, and the game generally has a lot more content and a lot more to offer than the first game. In a way, I view this game as more of a definitive edition of the first game rather than a full-on sequel. I think it's fair to say that, since neither game really has a story, the one main difference between the two, other than the new characters and arenas added, is that the first game was released as a tie-in to the first X-Men movie, therefore it had a lot of bonus features such as costumes from the movie, behind the scenes photos and even a trailer. This game however has nothing whatsoever to do with the movie, so those features aren't present, and instead you get other features, which isn't really an issue but I digress. You once again get a useful tutorial which can help you familiarise yourself with the controls and combat of the game, as well as a way to learn each character's moves and powers. Just like with the first, each character has their own specific fighting style, as well as their strengths and weaknesses. There are specific combinations for each character, and even some special moves. You have your standard attacks such as kicks and punches, which can of course be mixed up in combinations, kicking high and low and even from the air or the ground getting into a rhythm and finding out which character's combinations work better against others is very important in this game. You have high kicks, low attacks and even some grappling moves. These attacks can also be countered and it just does its bit to make the combat a bit less repetitive and a bit more unpredictable. Certain characters will be faster and more fluid than others, other characters will be slower yet far stronger and more durable. Certain characters are extremely brutish. As you strike enemies and gain momentum, you build up your power meter. When your power meter fills, you can use your special attacks. These are awesome. Seriously, some of these are absolutely badass and extremely effective in battles. They also look incredible. These can make all the difference in close battles and can be the decider so use them well. The issues with the controls appear to have been fixed from the first game also. No longer will you be frustrated from trying to pull off these combos, and having them refuse to register for seemingly no reason. In this game the controls seem more responsive and more refined, which is much appreciated by me. Just like the first game, the game has an arcade mode. You can choose a character from the roster, and take that character through a lineup of the other characters on the roster, taking them on one at a time in battles. Unlike the first game where these battles are scripted and you had to fight through the X-Men and the Brotherhood, in this game the battles are chosen seemingly at random. You could fight anybody from the roster at any time. At least I think that's the case. The combat of the game as well as the way the arcade mode works is very complex and nuanced, and there is plenty of variety. Unlike the first game which had a fairly limited roster, this game has a much larger roster, with a lot more characters to choose from. You have all the characters from the first game, as well as a big bunch of new ones to choose from. 
Some of them are from the X-Men and some of them are from the Brotherhood. Most of the characters you can play as straight away, with a few unlockable ones. The playable characters you have from the X-Men are Cyclops, Wolverine, Storm, Beast, Gambit, Phoenix, Havoc, Forge, and Rogue. From the Brotherhood you have Magneto, Sabretooth, Mystique, and Toad. On a side note, Toad in this game is surprisingly one of the toughest and most powerful characters on the roster. Seriously, I'm not joking. Toad in this game is an absolute badass. I played through the arcade mode a whole bunch of times with a whole bunch of characters and usually there were at least a couple of fights that gave me some trouble. Since the game is quite challenging and the AI can kick your butt at times, but when I played through the game as Toad, I was able to breeze through most of the battles with little to no trouble. He just seemed to be too fast and too skilled for the rest of them. Seriously, playing through this game as Toad and seeing him make Juggernaut his bitch was some experience. Toad is the greatest. He wasn't kidding, so yeah, Toad is a badass. In addition to these characters, you also have several unlockable ones that are not too difficult to unlock. These are Psylocke, Juggernaut, who is a huge tank and can seemingly take more damage than the other characters, and even Spider-Man. Yeah, that's right, you can play as Spider-Man in this game. He can be unlocked. What's cool about this too is that in addition to being insanely powerful and having some of the best looking moves, Spider-Man in this game is also voiced by Reno Romano, reprising his role from the PS1 games. The game also comes with a trailer for Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro, which came out the same year, which some of you might remember I reviewed a while back on the channel. I'll leave a link to that review in the description section if you want to check it out. Spidey also gets some of the best one-liners in the game. Perhaps you should find your happy place and stay there. Hey, I think we made some real progress here today. I really do. So yeah, playing as Spider-Man in an X-Men game I thought was really cool and a great addition. I really enjoyed it. I remember geeking out when I found that out for the first time. It was just one of them things that was a pleasant surprise. Another playable character you can unlock is Professor Charles Xavier, and in one of the most hilarious things I have ever seen in my entire life, he fights in his wheelchair. Seriously, kicking ass with Professor X in a wheelchair is absolutely mind-boggling and one of the reasons I love this game so much. It's just so quirky and weird, but I digress. After completing the arcade mode with one of the characters, that character will have their own ending cutscene for you to watch. Some of these are quite funny. I particularly like Toads. So that pretty much sums up the arcade mode, which sums up the game's main feature. In addition to that, you once again also have survival mode. This mode is pretty self-explanatory. It works pretty much the same way as it did in the first game, with you choosing a character from the roster and seeing how long you can last, and how many battles you can win. It's a nice little feature and it's fun to try out. You also once again have the two-player versus mode. Once again, this is pretty self-explanatory. You and a friend can play against each other in battle with whatever character you want. In addition to all this, the game does have some pretty cool bonus features. You once again get a gallery where you get a profile for each of the game's characters to read. You can also replay the game's cutscenes and cinematics from here, including each character's ending cutscene, as well as the game's intro. There are also a whole bunch of unlockable costumes for each character. You don't have the movie costumes like in the first game this time, but still, there are some pretty cool alternatives for you to unlock. These look awesome and add some replay value to the game, with several of them being costumes from the comics. I mentioned before that the game is visually based on the 90s X-Men animated series. Just like in the first game, some of the voice actors from the series reprise their roles here. And once again, the voice acting is excellent. So that pretty much sums up my thoughts on Mutant Academy 2. It's a fantastic fighting game for the most part, and as I mentioned before, it's practically a more complete and definitive version of the first game. 
I give the game a solid 8 out of 10, and I think the game holds up really well even today. It's not the best fighting game ever made or anything like that, but for an X-Men fighting game it pretty much exceeds expectations. Stay tuned for my next review where we're going to be looking at the third and final game in the Mutant Academy series, X-Men Next Dimension for the original Xbox. Let me know what you guys think, once again I have a lot of content coming to the channel in the near future. Thanks for watching and God bless.